So we're going to run through what an installer will see when they deploy an SD-WAN um, for the zero touch deployment process. So in this video, we've already as an admin um, provisioned a environment for the 210 and we are pushing that through the zero touch process and essentially the action is waiting or pending for the installer to initiate the, the box, bring it online. Um, and the steps for that um, involve the installer to go to their email address, identify that they're going to start the activation process and click the activation URL. Now, the next step is for the installer to identify what their topology is going to look like for this appliance and cable up the device exactly as um, the configuration would expect. Um, so in this case, we're going to, in our mobile kit, we have a 4G LTE modem that we'll use as one of the wide area network links. Um, and we'll just begin by cabling up, cabling up that link as configured in the topology. And we'll use, based on the topology, one slash two for the WAN link and the box does require IP connectivity for management for the internet and this is where the zero touch deployment process will get downloaded from so we need that management link to be connected either directly to the modem or we can leverage the switch because we're going to connect a a laptop to this environment as well. Um, so from the fail to wire card of one slash one, the partner pair for this bridge, we're gonna connect that to the switch as well. So essentially the LAN network is connecting through one slash one, going through the processing of SD-WAN connecting to the to the one slash two WAN link, which gets us out to the internet. So that means our management port will obtain an IP address going through the solution from our DHCP server, which is our Verizon modem in this case, as well as any LAN clients that are connect, connected into the switch will also get a DHCP IP address. And lastly, with the cable plugged, cables all plugged in, We'll plug in our power to our appliance and you'll hear a beep for it to power on. Um, and at that point, everything is automated. So as long as the cabling is, is correct and we have WAN connectivity and our management of our appliance, the management of the appliance is obtaining a DHCP IP address from our modem. The SD-WAN will reach out from the management IP address through the, to the public internet, um, obtain the communication for zero touch deployment, obtain the configuration for itself, obtain the license, and um, update the software if required. And then it will um, pull down and configure itself to join the SD-WAN environment and any ad additional WAN links that are in the configuration that are plugged in. Um, in this case, if we had another WAN link, we would plug it into uh, interface one slash four. Um, so at this point, we could just navigate back to our activation page and wait for the appliance to do its thing. So this is the indication that the box has um, successfully communicated to the zero touch deployment service, authenticated its serial number and validated um, that it's uh, a part of the zero touch deployments uh, process that the admin authorized. It's going to download its configuration, download any software that's required that may be, that may be missing on the local appliance. 
install the software, then apply the configuration that it was handed down to by the Zero Touch Deployment Service, install a license file, a temporary one if required, if one is not already allocated to it, and then activate the, the process, activate the SD-WAN service. Okay, with the appliance initiating that fail to wire card um, and starting, starting to process traffic, uh, at the head end we can then monitor the paths um, and as soon as the, the connectivity starts to be established between the head end and this branch office box, we'll start to see that internet path um, for the 210 appliance, but in this case connecting to the DC, go into a green state. And that completes the, the process for this 210 being initiated through Zero Touch Deployment Service and connecting to the virtual path of the environment that, that we have um, in the data center. So once the paths are available, we can then add additional host machines to the switch. And based on our configuration, Anything that is in that 172.17.50 subnet, which would get a DHCP assigned IP address uh, through the SD-WAN from the DHCP uh, Verizon modem that we have in this case, will have connectivity to the data center. Um, so we'll go ahead and cable that to a local laptop. connect into it, we just have to make sure that our Wi-Fi is disabled so that we're forcing the traffic to go through the Ethernet port. Um, and in this case, we have DHCP enabled and we have a assigned IP address in the target subnet. Um, and we can then uh, run ping to a IP address that's in our data center and this is going through the virtual path. So this is going through the appliance and partnering with the appliance in the data center. Um, so that I validates that we have connectivity to the data center. And then we can launch applications from there, or we can, um, we can run file transfers from devices in the data center. In this case, we'll just connect to a web video that's available in the data center and we can then manipulate the WAN links that we have to, to showcase the SD-WAN technology.